I walked back from the alley and looked at the businesses again in the strip mall. The liquor store was the only business open. I spit on my arms with what little fluid I had left inside of me and then plucked the tie-dye from my pocket and started scrubbing all signs of blood off my arms, chest, and stomach. I started into the store as a shirtless Texan would, and a tinny, distorted bell rang out. Turns out it was actually more of a head shop than a liquor store. The burnout behind the counter nodded his head. Sup, bro? He had a fuzzy brown beard, blended into his long hair that was pulled back into a ponytail. He was wearing a black big boy shirt with a giant anarchy symbol on it. Sweet, I pointed to his shirt. I love the big boys. He turned his back and sucked some THC out of a vape pen. Whatever, dude. I, like, got it at, like, a thrift shop or whatever. I walked over to the drink fridge, opened it, and grabbed a Gatorade. I closed it and then looked at the fifty in my hand that Linwood gave me. I reached back in for another bottle. Yeah, they were a killer hardcore band. Hardcore is lame, dude, he said as he puffed out a huge cloud. Fucking poser. I didn't respond. I walked toward the counter waving my way through the fog. I stopped at a rack of t-shirts and sifted through them. One said, high as fuck. Another said, legalize freedom, and had a pot leaf mixed into the lettering. Yet another one said, natural born chiller, and that Darwin's evolutionary progression where a monkey evolved into the silhouette of some guy sitting down smoking a bong. The best shirt had a bootleg version of the Converse Chuck Taylor logo and said, Pothead All-Stars. I held up the Chuck Taylor shirt and pointed to the logo. Do you have any shirts that aren't weed-related? He ignored me and picked up his phone and started scrolling through music. Excuse me? I snapped my fingers. He rolled his head back as if I were putting him out. What? I pointed to the shirt again. Do you have any non-stoner shirts? You like that, wouldn't you, you fucking narc? Narc? I just... <clears throat> he held up his phone and crushed his thumb into the volume button on the side. He closed his eyes and started waving his head back and forth. I dropped the shirt on the floor and grabbed the highest fuck shirt. It was black, whereas all the other shirts were green or even more ridiculous. As I was heading to the counter to pay, something caught my eye. It was one of those red, yellow, and green Rasta hats with the dreadlocks sewn into it. It reminded me of King Cobra. It wasn't very cool, but it was marginally cooler than Pinball's wig. The dipshit at the counter yelled over whatever shit indie music he was jamming out to. You gonna buy anything, you fucking asshole? I wanted to kill him so badly, but instead, I held up the hat. How much is this? He turned around and started playing with a Rubik's Cube like he didn't hear me respond to his question. I reached the counter and I put the hat, the shirt, and the two bottles of Gatorade in the glass case that contained every kind of porcelain bowl and bong slider you can imagine, as well as random shit-like papers, brass knuckles, and Zippo lighters. Hey, man, I said. He didn't answer again. I tried to reach across the display to tug on his shirt, but I couldn't reach him. Hey, man, I said again, this time louder. He spun around, tossed the Rubik's Cube into the air. What? Jesus, I've been trying to get your attention. I lifted the Rasta hat up again. How much is this? He looked down at my items. I don't know. I held up the fifty. I have money. He reached out toward the bell. Let me see that. I reached in so he could grab it. He snatched it from my fingers and then held it up to the light. He then shook his head, balled it up, and threw it back at me. It's counterfeit, you fucking convict. I bent over and picked up the money. I uncrumpled it, pulled it out with both hands, and then smacked it face down on top of the hat. It's not counterfeit, shithead! How much is all this crap? He looked down at my items and shrugged his shoulders. How am I supposed to know? I grabbed him by his shirt. Because you work here. That's how you know. 
You smell like you hurled, you fucking hobo, he said as he slapped my hand off his collar. I started collecting my stuff. How much? Like, fifty bucks, I guess. He tossed a plastic bag at me. I flicked the money at him. This should cover it. I put on the shirt and then I packed up the Rasta hat and the two bottles of Gatorade in the bag and headed out of the store. Come again, he called after me. I resisted the urge to bounce back into the head shop and mutilate the jackass who accused me of being a poser, a convict, a bum, and a narc, among other things. The last thing I wanted to do was to draw any more attention to the cyclone of waste that I had somehow managed to leave in my path since I arrived in Austin. If the Minutemen really wanted to get me, it wouldn't be too difficult to follow my breadcrumb trail of body parts and drugs across the city.